happen today. We're digging in to some college free agents, Stephen, and talking about these NCAA free agents. You have a list up or a list that went up at dailyfaceoff.com. Who is the top name on your list this year? Well, for sure, it's Colin Graff, a 21-year-old out of Quinnipiac. And last year, he played a really good uh, role for that team. And a lot of teams did call and say, like, hey, uh, would you be interested in turning pro? He decided to go back to college and is having an unbelievable season again this year. Like, you see the numbers. You don't typically see you know, 80, 90 points in college. So uh, nothing might not come, to come off crazy compared to some other levels of hockey. But what he's doing this year on a team that doesn't have a lot of NHL talent on it, NHL drafted talent, I should say, uh, it's just incredible. You know, he's got some good size, really high level hockey sense. He spends a lot of time around the net, finishes a lot of goals from in close. He just puts in the work ethic you're looking for. So, uh, you know, when it comes to college free agents, not many of these guys become really big impact players. It's more often than not that these guys are depth players, which is why you see a lot of, you know, defensemen coming in and maybe being a seventh defenseman for the future. But when it comes to forwards and specifically with Graf, like it, it's rare to see guys who can have an impact in the NHL, but I feel like he is one of those guys who's going to be able to do it. He could go back to college. He is still eligible, but I think he's ready. It just he shows so many uh, just smart things in, in his game, the way he thinks the two way game that excites a lot of scouts. So uh, I think when his season's over, teams going to be calling. Yeah, teams are already flocking to uh, Connecticut to see him, and they've been tracking him all year long. I'd be surprised with the amount of interest, even if he doesn't end up signing uh, after his college season is over. What about the goalie front? Are there any college free agent goalies that are available? You look at some of the undrafted guys, like to me, you should be taking as many flyers as you can on these guys that are coming out of school. If you're a believer at any point in their game, NHL guys that are undrafted uh, that have made it to this point, Cam Talbot, Logan Thompson, Charlie Lindgren, Alex Lyon. There's always a few uh, in terms of the goalies. Who's the top one? Well, you know, a lot of people were looking at Victor Osman for the season, but it hasn't been a great year for him. I think the one that I'm really looking forward to is Cooper Black. He is six foot eight. He's huge. And even some sources have him at six foot nine. I don't know if he's grown this year or not, but uh, just what he's been able to do this year at Dartmouth, which isn't a, you know, a top program, like there's not the top talent going there. Uh, I think he's done so well for them. He's a second year goalie. He's obviously got the size, uh, maybe not the quickest goalie in the net and sometimes can be beat because he's just not moving fast enough, but he's got the size you're looking for the size that very few NHL goalies have ever had in history. I believe if he does play an NHL game, he would be the tallest goalie to ever play. Um, but, you know, he's just the one thing that he does so well is just looking through traffic and whether that's getting low, whether it's looking above guys, that is a benefit for him. He's got a really good glove hand. And from talking to scouts, because goalies, again, are so hard to, to really judge, you know, you look at what Devin Levi was able to do, put up unbelievable numbers on a team that wasn't always great in front of him. With, with Black, he's put up some great numbers might not stand out on a page when you look at those stats, but he's had to do so much heavy lifting for this team where there's a lot of points this year where he's the reason they won. So I could see him signing a deal to play in the AHL next year, maybe a couple of years there and become a backup, but uh, there's no starter potential goalies I think available this year, but it, goalie depth is so important at this time. And I'd be taking a chance if I were an NHL team on Cooper black six foot nine, you know, someone's drooling over that. Uh, it seems like, that's the one, aside from maybe undersized defensemen, you know, teams are not really taking chances on undersized goalies. It's pretty rare to see that happen. Uh, let's talk about Gabriel Seeger and Dylan Anhorn, two 24-year-olds. Could they be closer to making an NHL team than some of the younger guys? In a way, yes. Uh, obviously, you know, when you're 24, you kind of expect that the player is like they're at their level. They're close to pro level at this point. You kind of know what their game is because, you know, 24 years old is older than a large chunk of currently player guys playing in the NHL. When it comes to Seeger, he's six foot four and 209 pounds. He's got some really good size there, some good numbers this year. This has been a breakthrough year. I think, you know, he's he really benefited from, from sticking around as a senior. I know there were some people wondering if he would turn pro last year, uh, but he's really kind of grown his game to be just all around so much better. Um, I, I think that just the size alone and how hard he works could make him uh, a potential uh, bottom six guy. You know, again, 
when it comes to 24, you kind of know what they could do. Uh, with Dylan Anhorn, uh, he's another player that's having a really good year this year. He kind of turned into this more offensive player than we've seen in the past at St. Cloud State. I think that uh, he also played two years at Union College, and that move to St. Cloud State with some good coaching there really kind of helped elevate his game to show that, you know, he's a smart player that just needed that opportunity to kind of really go out on his own and, and, and take control of the puck. And, um, I think he's kind of just a prototypical guy you'll see in the AHL that could get called up from time to time. But yeah, when it comes to 24 year olds, it's like you'd hope these guys are closer to playing in the the NHL. But in reality, the potential is not typically high for them to become full time players. Sticking with the college theme, but moving off of free agents, let's talk a little bit about Macklin Celebrini. He's obviously been getting a ton of recognition for his strong season. Hobie Baker, though. Well, it's, it's a tough one because, you know, a lot of people are looking at Cutter Goche and seeing that and guys like Will Smith, just so many talented players, Lane Hudson again. But what Celebrini's doing as a rookie this year, like it's it's rivaling what we saw last year with Adam Fantilli and in some cases maybe even better, put up unbelievable numbers this year. He was actually the Hockey East scoring champion. Just reading off some of his other stats here, player of the year, rookie of the year. He's a Hobie Baker uh, nominee. He's a finalist for the award in the, the, the final 10. Uh, they do the way the, the Hobie Baker works is they have like a bunch of nominees, then they go to a top 10 and then they go to a top three. I do expect him to be in the, the conversation there for three, because even if he doesn't end up, you know, being the top scoring player in college hockey, 55 points in 33 games as a freshman, he missed a couple games at the start of the year due to injury that didn't seem to slow him down. There's been no question all year long that Macklin Celebrini is the best prospect in this draft. He just does everything so well. Like he's as close to a complete player as you're going to find playing college hockey. And I'm glad he took this route. I, I don't know how much he would have benefited from playing against kids his own age in the WHL. At least going here and playing at Boston University, he gets to be in that weight room. He gets to play against older competition. A lot of these guys are going to be playing pro hockey next year, and that has really set him up here. So, you know, he's benefited from having a guy like Lane Hudson passing to him uh, often, especially on the power play. But Celebrini, what he's done this year, the offense, all the accolades, I hope he gets the Hobie Baker just because that would be pretty fun. That would be an awesome story. And you mentioned Lane Hudson there and wanted to put you on the spot. Of all the players that could jump to the NHL after this college season ends, who are you most looking forward to seeing in the NHL this year? I kind of hope it is Lane Hudson, just because I think that'd be pretty fun. Uh, you know, I, I know I'd be surprised if he isn't in a Montreal Canadiens uniform. This is the most exciting juncture of their season. Obviously, David Reinbacher coming over, and you know, they're they've got so much to look forward to to get their hands on these guys, but Cutter Gauthier, like I'd imagine he'd be in the Ducks lineup at some point. Who else is on the on the radar? So I don't know if everyone really kind of will agree on me this one, but I think Will Smith's ready to go to the NHL. Um, both him and Ryan Leonard in particular are two guys that I think just have the skill level to step in right away. Ryan Leonard, uh, you know, a power forward guy putting up outstanding numbers this year at uh, Boston College. Uh, basically, just look at Boston College lineup and like half these guys probably <laughs> should be in the NHL, whether it be Goche. I think Will Smith's smart enough that he could step in immediately and do something with the Sharks. Um, but uh, when it comes to Hudson, you know, we, we know that it doesn't look like Reinbacher is going to step up to the NHL next year, but you look at that future of that Canadian's blue line. It's looking really good. And Lane Hudson, I hope he gets a couple games in the NHL this year. I don't think he's got anything to prove in college. I do think he should spend the next year in the AHL to kind of get used to the, the more physical nature of pro hockey, but give him I'm a little a taste. Got to dangle the carrot. Yeah. Yeah. Give get, let I mean, him, let him play a couple games in the NHL, send him to Laval next year, see what happens. Got nothing to lose. Stephen Ellis, our associate editor and prospect analyst, wanted to give you some love for your piece that went up about an hour ago. Uh, bang for your buck, players excelling on league min contracts. Really good stuff, Stephen. Thanks for doing this. Thanks so much. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.